people, it's amazing what's going on. And uh, we're having fun. I like to keep it life as normal as possible for my son, Baron. And uh, I'm a full-time mom and I love it. So I decided not to be in the campaign so much, but I support my husband 100%. Curious about the dynamics of one of the most talked about couples in America? Join us as Melania Trump opens up about her relationship with Donald Trump, revealing the real story behind their public persona and the complexities that define their life together. We want to understand who Melania is. I grew up in Slovenia mm -hmm. and I went to school there. I study design and architecture. She was always a bit different in the best possible way. She didn't uh, fantasize about, uh, I don't know, being a teacher or being a doctor. She would like, to, she wanted to be a model. During her time in Slovenia, Melania Trump, then Melania Knavs, was in her late teens and early 20s, navigating the early stages of her modeling career. She left Slovenia in 1992 to pursue her modeling career in Milan and Paris. And then I moved to Milan and Paris to live there. And uh, I had successful modeling career. I came to New York 1996. How many languages do you speak? I speak few languages. A few? Yeah. English? English, Italian, French, uh, German. What was it that you saw in Donald when you met him or fell in love with him? His mind, amazing mind. and. Uh, very smart, very charming, a great energy. We have a great relationship. We, um, uh, we are own people. I'm my own person, he's his own person. And I think that's very important. I don't want to change him, he doesn't want to change me. The press has often attacked Melania Trump with harsh questions, targeting her personal life, accent, and marriage. Yet, through all the criticism, she remained calm and composed, never letting the media shake her. I got a list of terms that have been used to describe your husband, and they're not pretty. Um, from stupid to demagogue, jerk, idiot, racist, sexist, race baiting, xenophobic, vulgarian in chief, textbook narcissist. Uh, it goes on. What, what do you make of all this when you hear it? It's normal that will come up. It's, we are prepared for that. We have a thick skin and uh, we know that people will judge him and people will call names and um, they don't give him enough credit. Many felt he had insulted Mexicans. No, I don't feel he insulted the Mexicans. He, he said illegal immigrants. He didn't talk about everybody. He talked about illegal immigrants. And after a few weeks, like after two weeks, giving him a hard time and bashing him in the, in the media, they turned around. They said, you know what, he's right. He's right what he's talking about. And he opened conversation that nobody did. But you're an immigrant. Yes. Do you ever think he's gone too far? I follow the law. I follow a law the way it's supposed to be. I never thought to stay here without papers. I had visa, I travel every few months back to the country, to Slovenia, to stamp the visa. I came back, I applied for the green card, I applied for the citizenship later on after many years of green card. So I went by system, I went by the law. And you should do that. You should not just say, okay, let me just stay here and whatever happened, happens. When he talked about a ban on Muslims, um, which can't happen. Trump's ban on Muslims, formerly known as the Muslim ban, was a controversial executive order issued on January 27, 2017, during his first week in office. It restricted travel from seven predominantly Muslim countries, Iran, Iraq, Libya, Somalia, Sudan, Syria, and Yemen citing national security concerns. The ban was criticized for targeting people based on religion and nationality, leading to protests and legal challenges. Donald J. Trump is calling for a total and complete shutdown of Muslims entering the United States until our country's representatives 
can figure out what the hell is going on. I mean, do you ever think he's going too far with some of this? Well, do you ever worry he, about it? Well, he, what he said is it will be temporary, mm -hmm. and it's not for all the Muslims. It's the one, we need to screen them who is coming to the country. He wants to protect America. He wants to protect people of America so we have a country and keep a country safe. That's very important to him. And what's going on in the world it's very dangerous. You have people coming in the country, you don't know who they are. You don't know what they will do. What about some of the language he uses? He curses. In the meantime, we can't get a school built in Brooklyn. We have nobody in Washington that sits back and said, you're not going to raise that price. You understand me? Do I agree all the time mm -hmm. with him? Mm -hmm. No, I okay. don't. And I tell him that. Listen, you mother we're going to tax you 25%. Bomb the out of them. I was going to say they're full of but I won't say that. You can tell them to go themselves. I tell him my, my opinions. I tell him what I think. Sometimes he listens, sometimes he don't. In what areas do you advise him? I follow the news from A to Z. And I know what's going on. I on I'm on the phone with my husband few times a day. Mm -hmm. He calls me, I call him, I tell him what's going on, he's on the road, and uh, I give him my opinions. In the Trump Organization, how are women treated compared to men? They treat it equal. I see him in life, he treats women the same as men. He will tell you what is in his heart, what he thinks, he will not um, uh, hold it back. If you're a woman, you are, you are human. You're human, you're not, it's a woman or a man, it's no difference, you are human. She has a nice smile on her face, so I bet she treats you well. <laughs>